Guys, I love mobile homes. They're half the cost, twice the cash flow, but I've seen a lot of investors get murdered and go bankrupt and leave the industry because they made some basic mistakes I'm gonna share with you on the board today. Talking about zoning, specifically zoning at the end, guys, if you buy a mobile home in an area that's not zoned for mobile homes and you cannot change the zoning, you're in a bad spot. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna break down the difference between personal and real property. You have to understand the difference because I did not and it cost me a fortune on my very first deal. I'll tell you a story about that. And I'm gonna tell you some reasons why I will never, and I mean never buy a mobile home inside of a park ever again. Now I may buy the park, the land, and all the mobile homes, and if you guys have mobile home parks you're coming across, guys, contact me, my information is below. I'm also looking for giant commercial properties and big multi-unit properties, guys. Reach out to me if you're a wholesaler and you're coming across these deals, just reach out to me. Also, if you're a real estate agent, guys, we're doing national referrals, reach out to me as well. But I wanna break down some of the biggest problems buying a mobile home in a park and how you're gonna have a really big headache if you do this. Now I'm not saying if the numbers don't work, don't do it. I'm just saying I personally won't ever do this again. The first thing I want to talk about is personal versus real property. So think of a mobile home as a car. It's personal property until it's attached to the ground. The easiest way to understand this is, is the property movable or immovable, right? So if it's not attached to real estate and not attached to the ground and secured through what's called improved value, you have personal property. It is not real property. And when it's attached to the ground, you now have real property. So it cannot be moved. This is important to understand because I once bought a piece of property where I thought I was buying the mobile home and the land and I just bought the land. In fact, I'll put a link to this at the end of this video so you can see this because it's a giant nasty nightmare for me and I learned a lot of lessons. Now, just keep that in mind guys. Are you buying personal property or real property? Now, talk about where you're buying the property. If it's on its own land, you're in a good position. If it's in a mobile home park, you're in a control issue. So think about this guys. When you're buying a piece of pro or when you're buying a mobile home inside of a mobile home park, let's say that owner of the mobile home park has a hundred units, hundred lots, hundred units. They may they may own 70 of those units themselves, 50, 30, some distribution of what they own and what's privately owned. So if you're gonna buy a property in there, you're subject to the rules of that park. There's been properties that I've bought inside parks because the numbers looked amazing and I found out why they looked so amazing because nobody wanted it because nobody wanted to deal with the control issues. They're regulating this. There's certain rules the park makes you operate under that can eat up costs. They make uh, you go to the front office to get qualified when you sell the property or rent the property and that's also something I wanna talk about in the competition to, uh, a bullet point right here because this is gonna cause a lot of extra stress and headache for you. So when you're inside of a park, you're subject to the rules of that park. They own that park, they own the land, you just own the mobile home on their land and you're paying them for lot rent. Whether you're renting around it or wrapping around it, you need to follow their rules and nobody know. and if you guys know about rules, nobody likes rules because it's just something else you have to deal with. You lose control. So it's something to be uh, pay close attention to when you buy in a park, you're giving up control. Number two, cash flow issues. When you buy on land, you own the land, you don't pay for lot rent. So in a park, you're gonna have extra fees and the big one is lot rent that you have to pay that mobile home park because the person that owns the mobile park or the people that do, the investors that do, they own the land, you're renting that land from them, you don't own it, you may own the mobile home unit, but think about that, that's eating up your cash flow. So you need to make sure that you know about this because a lot of people don't think about this when they go run their numbers. They put a lot of time and due diligence in running their numbers. Then they find out, oh my gosh, I was about to close on this property and I realized I'm gonna owe $350, $450 in lot rent and lot rents can go up. This is what I want you to understand. They can go up. So today money, cash flow today money is great, but what about cash flow tomorrow, tomorrow money when you don't have control of the property and you don't have control of the lot rents. They can up these and depending on which state and which area and what you sign when you sign the contract, they can do it pretty quickly. So this is something that eats up cash flow and for mobile home investors. And this is uh, the big part that I want you to understand is what if lot rent goes up? Now you're in competition problems with other investors in the marketplace, meaning that micro market, that mobile home park. But here's the one I wanna tell you a story on because facts tell story sell guys. You're competing against the park as well. So I came across a mobile home. This is a good breakdown story that's really gonna resonate with you guys. It was like $8,000, I think this one was. Need like $5,000 in repair. All the mobile home units in that area were going inside that park, were going for like 27 to 35,000. So I'm thinking, wow, I'm in at 50 cents on the dollar. I'm gonna owner finance this for hire and I'm gonna be in a great position. Well, then I found out that there's certain rules that they had that I couldn't do what I was trying to do. And then I had to get into a situation where I had to rent the property and I couldn't do that either. Why? This has happened to me not just once or twice, but multiple times, which is why I don't go into parks anymore. 
because every single time I tried to go rent the property or sell the property in these certain parks, what would happen was they would have uh, rules that I had to sign when I bought the property that everything would run through them. There had to be a full application up front. They had to vet the individual and they had to run their credit score and do all the basic preliminary process. But what would happen was, think about it. Let's say there's a unit, there's a hundred units in the mobile home park. There's 10 available and you're, one of yours is one of the ones that's available, but they own the other nine or say there's just five and they own the other four. What do you think is going to happen when you spend a bunch of time running ads, putting out marketing pieces to drive traffic to sell yours or rent yours, and they have to go through the front office, a competitor of yours in the same park that has a property for, that's, on, that's up for sale or up for rent for right around the same price that you ran your comps at because they essentially set the comps for that market. What do you think happened? I literally, in these couple uh, positions or uh, situations, I had to sell every single property out for the entire park or rent every property out for the entire park myself before I could rent mine out so there was no more competition. Because every single time someone would come to my property, they'd say, oh my gosh, great price, love it, or I'm fine with the rent, let's go up, let's get it done. They'd go up to the front, I'd start the process, and like a black hole, they would disappear. Because the people in the front would basically turn them into a customer for themselves and they could tweak the financing, tweak the rent rates, make it so irresistible that no matter what, I would never win in the heads up battle against competition. Now the other thing is guys, Thinking about on the acquisition side, competition in the mobile home park, do you think that there's other people in that park, if you go look at who owns these mobile homes, you're gonna find that there's other people that own privately owned uh, properties in there as well as the park owns the rest of those units. If you're getting that property for a certain price and those people have a for sale sign up or they're marketing it publicly, why do you think that you can get it for so cheap and the park didn't want it or another investor who's that, who, who has that as their main hunting ground, their main marketing area, why do you think they haven't bought it before you? There could be something wrong with it and it means the numbers don't work. So on that particular property, I bought it for like eight, I put, it, put five into it and by the time I got out of it, I basically broke even, even though I thought I was in at 50 cents on the dollar. So sometimes there's what's called a phantom illusion of how the numbers work out on the back end because you don't know all the variables that you're gonna come across. So I thought I was gonna be able to just get in, get out, make some money. No, that was not what happened, was it? So think about that guys, you're competing against the park, you're competing against other investors on the acquisition side. If neither of them have bought it, the people that work that area more than you before you, why have they not bought the property at the price that you're getting it and why didn't they think it was a home run deal? Think about that. And then on the back side, think about how you're gonna exit. There's two parts to making money in real estate. You gotta buy the property and you have to exit the property and most people are only fixated here. I'm getting a great deal here, but why are you getting a great deal here? Can you exit it with the numbers that you think you're gonna get? Just something to think about. And then the increased cost and time. Think about how much extra time that cost me. Even though I basically broke even or made a couple grand on these deals, um, what happened was I lost money because my time in the deal and with my stress, it just made it even worse. So when you have to market to that many more people and spend that much more time, guys, your stress goes up, your time in it goes up, which makes the deal not worth doing. Even if I made a decent amount of money on these, it probably still wasn't worth the time and stress uh, if you think of it that way. You can't just look at things with the dollar amount that you make, you have to look at the time you spent and the stress you spent to get that deal done. Because two different people make 10 grand a piece on a deal, but one spent more time, so one made more money. Okay, so that's what I want you to understand here. Controlling the property, you're giving up a lot of control, you're gonna lose cash flow because extra cost, specifically lot rent that can go up, can go up quickly, and they're making big jumps in lot rail around the country. Competition problems increase cost of time. Now, zoning, I get this all the time, guys. You need to be careful. There are older cities that you can go into a subdivision. It's like house, house, mobile home, mobile home, house, house, mobile home. And then there's an empty lot. And you're thinking you're just gonna buy a cheap mobile home right off Craigslist or they're giving away for free in some parts of the country because there's no demand for them. These are nice properties. And you're like, I'm just gonna move this over here, move it right on this lot and it's gonna cash flow huge. Why I want you to think about this for a second is, why don't you think anybody else had that great, great, great idea before you? That, that piece of land, that lot in that subdivision has been there for decades. Why didn't someone do this before you? It's not that you're a genius that you just thought of it. It's that lots of people thought of it, but they went to the city and found out that those mobile homes in that subdivision are grandfathered in already, and they're not letting people move new mobile homes in there. And I've seen a lot of people do this. They go buy a piece of land in a subdivision in an infill lot, and what happens is they try to move a mobile home in, and the city comes out and says, whoa, 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 what are you doing? You're saying, well, I'm just putting a mobile home in here just like these other people did, 
And they're going to go, yeah, because in 1985 or whatever, we had a grandfathering policy in this area that anybody that had their unit in there before this can stay, but no more units after this. So guys, before you ever go do this, before you ever decide to move a mobile home on a piece of property or uh, to do anything like this in real estate, check with the city, find out the zoning process, find out if you're able to do this because I've seen a lot of people close on properties before they realize they can't do what they thought they were going to do. So I hope these tips help you guys. If you're trying to sell mobile homes, uh, mobile home parks, reach out to me below guys. I'm looking to buy these all across North America. There's also a video, I think it's right here, if you want to see the nightmare of my first deal where I break down, this is also how I came across owner financing, guys. You're going to like this video. It's my very first deal that I took title to when it comes to mobile home where I bought the land and not the mobile home. It's also one of my first uh, first videos on Investor Army to go back to see how far we've come. I think you're going to enjoy watching this video. And uh, like, share, and subscribe, guys. The basic cliche uh, calls to action there, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day.